it's just a short video on a tool that I'm in the process of making. Uh, during this video, I'm still in the process of making it, but by the conclusion of the video, it'll be up and operational for you to see. I'm building these fuel blocks here. These are for the uh, the 94 and a half to 97 Ford F-Series trucks with the 7.3 diesel in there. This is part of the electric fuel conversion. Uh, this is for the engine side of it. Uh, I have other videos out there on YouTube that demonstrate this and, and what it is. So, what's the purpose of this video? These blocks all require uh, holes to be drilled, obviously, and then they require tapping in there. This is a pipe tap. There's eight holes on each block. I'm trying to do 50 blocks uh, at a time, 50 of these fuel blocks. Eight, eight holes times 50 blocks is 400 holes that need to be tapped. Uh, it's pretty tough to do with by hand with just a hand tap. Um, so I looked around and there are attachments that you can get for your drill press, but they're pretty pricey. So rather than uh, putting money into that right away, I just looked around the shop to see what I had laying around that might help me to solve my problem. Well, a couple of weeks ago, I had found a bed, a single occupant bed, a single bed uh, in a guy's driveway. It had a free sign on there. So I, I drove past and wasn't interested, obviously, initially, but as I glanced at it, I, I noticed I think that thing has electric motors on it. So I pulled over, and sure enough, it did. Uh, it's a adjustable bed where you can raise the feet and raise the head on it. So I went ahead and I just grabbed it, threw it in the back of my truck, brought it home. Here's one of the motors. It had two motors on there. Uh, this is the control unit here. Uh, you have a handheld device here for the foot and the head to raise and lower the foot and the head. That's those uh, four different buttons right there. Uh, the electric motor itself, there's a pair of these. There's another one up, uh, up, upstairs in the storage room. Uh, and it's a reversible motor. Uh, it has forward and reverse, which is what these buttons do right here. Um, so we're going to use this right here. Uh, it has a nice drive off the front of it here where there's a hole in the shaft uh, with the roll pin that goes in there. And then what else I needed that I didn't have, uh, I just jumped on Craigslist real quick and had found myself uh, a small benchtop Ryobi drill press. Uh, it's an older unit, but it's a decent unit. I picked it up for $50 and it's perfect for this, uh, for this operation. So I think you can kind of see where I'm headed with this now. I have a nice uh, reversible motor. Uh, and by the way, this is a very slow RPM because it raises and, and lowers uh, feet on a, uh, on a bed, so obviously it's not very fast. You can see it's gear reduced. You can see the gear reduction box at the front of it. Um, so between the lower RPM and high torque I get out of this with the gear reduction, and then you couple that with the pulley on top of the uh, drill press itself, uh, I should come out with a really nice uh, uh, tool here for, for tapping out these holes. So. What I had to do uh, to get this going, uh, one thing, uh, make an adapter. This is just a piece of three-quarter inch uh, rod that I turned the diameter down on on one side here, cut a keyway in it, uh, and that'll just slip onto the motor right here. Uh, the roll pin will go right into the hole that you see drilled on the side of it there, and, and that'll lock that on nice and tight. The pulley right here came off the original motor. The original motor is right on the other side of the table there. Changed nothing about the motor, so I could always just, you know, make this a regular old drill press again. Uh, that has the keyway on it. This is key. Uh, I have the key sitting over here, so I can uh, put the pulley on there with the key, and now I've got this pulley adapted to this motor. And then, obviously, the next thing I have to do is I had to build a bracket, uh, which was just a couple of scrap pieces of plate I had laying around. This bolts up into the motor position, the big flat uh, area here. And then uh, in between here, there'll be a band clamp uh, to go on there, and that'll go around the front of the motor up in here. And then there was two uh, bolts right here and over this side here. Uh, these held this cover on here, and all this cover does is it hides a piece of uh, Acme rod, uh, the bed not only raised and lowered the head and foot, but the whole bed itself raised up and down, uh, and that's what the Acme rod did. It, it worked a mechanism for, for rolling the uh, bed up and down. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble this thing off camera, uh, and then we'll be back in just a moment so that uh, you can see it on the drill press. All right, here we are uh, with the motor now mounted up on the drill press. Uh, you can see it's on the bracket. Uh, see if this will get us close enough in here to see well enough. Uh, just the two bolts on the bottom, the one band clamp up the top here, just a piece of plate coming off the main back plate here. 
I rolled a piece of 16 gauge around for the band clamp to hold on to. Um, everything here is just some scrap. There's some 3 16 plate that was laying. Uh, I used that for both sides uh, of the motor over here. Uh, gutter, this uh, cover stays on there nice and tight once those bolts are in there. I've got it on the second pulley position. Um, so it's on like, uh, whatever speed it might go. It's hard to predict. Uh, still, I can use, I can change the uh, pulley out, the, the different positions real quickly. It's just on the on the adjuster right there. So adjust that real quick to change the speeds if I decide it's too fast or too slow for whatever tap size I might be using. Um, let's uh, see it go here. I've got the control right here. Um, I plugged myself into the head side, not the foot side, because this is the headstock after all, so wouldn't want to confuse myself. Uh, but there we are. You can actually sit here and just count the rotations. Let the, uh, that's actually reverse direction, but uh, run the run the tap in, get to how depth you, how deep you want to go, uh, and then run it back out. And what's neat about uh, having it on the drill press like this, you know, I can get my block, uh, sit nice and plumb you know, underneath the headstock of the drill press. So I, I drop that, this is obviously not a tapping bit, I just put it in there so you can kind of see the rotation. Uh, but allow it to just drop nice and plumb straight down in there. So when the fittings go in and just use the uh, stock here to ride the tap down in there and then back out again, when the fittings go in there, they just stick. So perfectly straight up out of that block. There's no, nothing's crooked, you know, nothing's off at, a, at an angle, left, right, up or down or something. It just comes out perfect every single time. So let's now go ahead and get uh, the tap and, and let's uh, see how it, how it really does work. All right, well, let's try this thing out on its maiden voyage here. Um, having a little bit of trouble because I don't have the chuck key for this chuck. Uh, when I got it off Craigslist, the owner didn't have the chuck key for it anymore, so I've got to, got to find one of those. I've got it uh, rough fenced in here with just some metal that I cut up to make a fence. Um, I'll work on this and make it a little bit better. Uh, the concept though is I, I don't want to use a vise. I don't want to hard vise this block in place because uh, I would have to be able to get dead center underneath the tap as it was coming in in the vise, which is uh, highly improbable. So in the fence it, it'll sit a little bit loose and that's what you want, both forward, back, left, right. That allows the block just enough movement that when the tap comes into it, it'll self-center uh, and still the fence is there to hold it back from spinning. So let's go ahead and give it a try. Now this is a high hook tap, uh, so it cuts this aluminum just really nicely. It just cleans the chips, clears them really well as it goes down in, so it really doesn't fight or struggle making its way down in there. And that right there is probably far more than deep enough, so now we'll go ahead and just clear ourselves out of there. We can just let the let the block up and just let it go until it drops. In fact, I might have even tapped in just a little too deep. Now the holes, I do run a taper reamer down in there first before trying to tap. So there we are. Oh yeah, that's that's far more than deep enough. I don't know that the camera can see the threads, but uh, it's quite deep in there. Uh, so there we go. We have a tool now. We can do 400 holes. Uh, one down, 399 to go.